Right, so today we're in a pretty amazing place, Tongariro National Park, and Ashley and I decided we were going to do the Tongariro Crossing nice and early, 5.45, and of course a bit of a screw up and we've missed the shuttle, so we're just waiting on the road for the 7 o'clock shuttle, and I don't know, I'm trying to see behind me here, we're going to watch the sunrise come over, over Tongariro, you can see Narahoe and Tongariro on the background, it looks really beautiful and, and real Ruapehu over there, so sometime in the next hour or so, we're going to go climb those. One of the most famous walks in the world, one of the most famous day walks, the Tongariro Crossing. We'll see you very soon. So, a wee bit of background info for people who don't know what the Tongariro Crossing is. It's one of the most famous alpine day walks in the world, in New Zealand, and it crosses basically a plateau of of the Tongariro, Tongariro volcano and it's also made up of the cone of Narahoe which you might know from the Lord of the Rings it's Mount Doom uh, during the peak times uh, outside of COVID thousands and thousands of people do this walk every single day it's extremely popular for a few things um, the Devil's Staircase which we're going to come across pretty soon uh, the emerald and blue lakes at the top, which are really cool, which we'll run into. Uh, the crossing is in Tongariro National Park, which um, is quite interesting in its own right. It was gifted by the Māori to New Zealand and became a park in 1897, which is actually only the fourth national park in the world and the first national park in New Zealand. So a fair bit of history here. Now as I've been walking up, I've noticed a lot of this here. That's heather, or Coluna vulgaris. It was introduced into the park in the early 1900s because they wanted to release pheasants or game into the park for hunting. Now, there was a massive public outcry about releasing game into the park and so that never happened but unfortunately the heather did get released and it's now run rampant across the whole park and it's an invasive species so there's ongoing efforts to basically try and slow it down but it just shows you what can happen when you release a species into an area that's not native to that area it can just completely unbalance the whole ecosystem all right, let's keep going. So this first section of the track mainly consists of basically uphill through a sort of rocky tundra, I suppose I'd say. So you basically head up towards the Devil's Staircase coming very soon. Soda Springs. How's it? Hey. Ashley forging on ahead, trying to build up a lead. Ash. No pack, of course. Yours truly is carrying that, but that's fine. All right, we've just come up through the top of the first, end of the first section. Now we're about to tackle the Devil's Staircase, which is up behind us here. Um, really cool view of Nauhoe here. Very cool. Now for the hard part. Devil's Staircase starts at 1400 meters elevation and goes to 1600 it's basically 200 meters straight up hence why it's called the Devil's Staircase it finds a few people out so at this point here taking a slight detour you can see everyone else basically heads up there and then up the Devil's Staircase but if you detour down to the side here there's another area here called the Soda Springs and it's a lovely little waterfall so we'll go have a look we didn't get all dressed up for nothing looks like someone's made this their base camp not quite sure where they are <laughs> see behind me soda springs some people would say it's not anything too amazing but 
It's a natural spring flowing down in the middle of an active volcano. Oh, made me think like one thing is when you do any trip and this is why I always think is that maybe if you see a little side path and it says two minutes to lookout view or something like that and everyone else continues to go the same way maybe duck off you've already spent all the time getting there you may never come back and that's what I always think so I like to always do the extra thing that others don't as you can see down there everyone everyone else bypasses this area so it's it's nice to just be somewhere by yourself no it is it is special right now let's go catch Ashley she's gonna have about a 15 minute head start on me on the devil's staircase she's probably really pissed off right now let's go get her today we're rocking the Garmin Phoenix 6 Pro of course which in my mind is the best outdoor watch in the world I've got mapping we've got GPS we've got everything but most of all we've got some long battery life now I'm not sponsored by Garmin but I could be come on Garmin give me a yell all right let's go get Ashley she'll be up there somewhere by now let's go so this is the start of the real devil's staircase in earnest which is basically just 200 meters straight up winding through an old lava flow but it's tough I can't see Ashley but we'll catch her soon enough Fifteen hundred elevation, halfway up. Found her. Hey. Caught her with not far to go. With great. Uh, yeah. Must say the track has improved a lot since the last time. The last time I did it. A lot of nice steps and stuff now, so it's not too bad. Made it, Ash? Yeah, I did okay. Yeah. See now a hallway behind us, looks really cool. And quite the epic view of Tongariro National Park. We're going to stop, have a little break, drink something to eat, refuel. And then it's onwards in this direction, down towards the crater and the lakes. So we've moved on from the Devil's Staircase now. Now we've come over the top into a flat area which I, like. I assume we're in an old caldera, like this is a um, an old crater I, I would assume. Ashley likes this part. I like this part. <laughs> a good bit. So from here, the next hard part is we go up to Red Crater, which is up the top there, right at the very, very top, in which we, and we have to follow this path along there, up the ridge line. I've done this before when it was really windy and it was a bit of a pain but we got perfect conditions today so I think it's going to be really nice. Alright so we're starting the next, the next major climb and the only other real major climb which is the climb up to Red Crater. So. She's a bit more of an incline, but it's not too bad. Surviving. So on our way up Red Crater, thought of a little bit of a story, because we've got such an epic view of Mount Narahoe behind us, or Mount Doom. 1975, a teacher and a large group of school children were making their way up the side and they felt a rumbling and the mountain erupted. Now they managed to scurry away to safety but it shows you that even though they may seem very dormant they most certainly are not. Anything can happen at any time as we saw with White Island. Straight up.
felt like falling down so a helicopter would come and get me. <laughs> Almost at the top. A little bit more to go. Fantastic views. This is a red crater. You wouldn't be amiss feeling like we're in the Himalayas or something right now. The cloud coming through certainly gives it a quite an eerie feeling. You can see in the distance there, still active. See steam coming out of the side of the mountain there. This is a volcano, after all. Roger, rather large can there. Do my part. How are you going? Yeah, not great. Uh, am I on the right track? Oh, let's, let's go that way. Not a bad view. So down here, got the Emerald Lakes, Blue Lake over there, I believe. So we're actually sitting down at the base of the Emerald Lakes. You can see back up Red Crater where we came, the Scree Slope. Um, the reason the, the Emerald Lakes have this emerald colour to them, it's actually from calcium, calcium carbonate, which basically forms at the bottom of the lake and then it reacts with the sunlight to give it this really awesome, brilliant hue. Pretty sure that's the what you can see, the white around the edge there. Something interesting, just to remind you that you are on an active volcano. If you're quiet, you can, you can hear the steam coming out the side over there. Quite surreal. Not many countries in the world, I don't think, that you'll find that. The water's cold. Don't swim in here. It'll make you sick. Yep, too many minerals. We've had a sudden, a sudden medical discovery. <laughs> Ashley's just discovered that her hands, show me, show everyone your hands. Look at that, they've swollen up okay. like little, like the Sausages. fucking, like the Pillberry, what's his name? The, the Marshmallow Man from Ghostbusters. <laughs> Something about the Tongariro Crossing that catches a lot of people out and it's happened to us right, right at this moment, it just gives you a sense of it. It was so hot before and then literally in the click of a finger, Suddenly cloud covers come in, a bit of wind, and now it's so cold Ashley's put her jacket back on. So if you do come up here, it doesn't matter what kind of day it is, make sure you bring a jacket because people get caught out all the time. The weather can change very quickly in an alpine situation, so always be prepared. So it's getting a little bit windy, hope it's hope you can hear me, but this is the Blue Lake. And the Blue Lake is actually Tapu, which basically is Māori, the indigenous people of New Zealand, it's sort of their word for basically sacred, which means that you're not allowed to go down to the lake, you're not allowed to eat at the lake, swim in the lake, lie by the lake or do anything near the lake, so that's why the path goes up around the side here and you won't see anyone down at the lake. Sometimes it's nice to have places where people can't go. And the cloud rolls in. Oh yeah look it's all downhill. So we're basically we've come over the top now. It's all downhill to the car park from here. So we've done how far have we gone? About 12 k's. The whole trip is 19 k's, so we've got about 7 k's straight downhill. It's really chilled off now, so the clothes are going back on. Ashley's smiling, it's all downhill. Happy. She's happy. Good day. Good day.
this vent that's right behind me that you can see is the perfect example of how this is still an active volcano. In 2012 it randomly erupted and there was a hut just up behind us here that people could stay at and boulders and, and bits of debris smashed through the roof of the hut, the bunks and everything. Luckily there was no one in there at the time or it would have killed people. But there are impact craters around the place here from that eruption so it's just a reminder that this is still an active volcano. There, you can see the steam billowing out of it right now. So sometimes we sort of forget that these are still dangerous places and you do have to be aware and that you take a risk just being here. Just come across something quite interesting. Just down from the last spot there was an eruption is a stream and the water's actually grey. I don't know if that's ash that's been running down from, from the crater itself or not, but it's interesting. Grey water. You can see the, the crater up there, so must be surely. This is just another one of those examples of why it's good to follow the little side paths. Just saw a little side path. Beautiful waterfall. So this is near the end of the hike. You'll see a little guy with a little binoculars. Awesome. Half tempted to go jump in. What an awesome day. Great track. Beautiful to actually get to finish in like native New Zealand bush like this. Um, so at the end of the day, if you want to do the Tongariro crossing, I recommend doing it in summer. Uh, that's the best time. You can do it in winter as well, but you're going to probably need a guide as it's quite dangerous. The weather can change very quickly. Uh, but hey, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It means a lot. And if you really like it, maybe consider subscribing because it's all the same kind of content, adventure with a purpose. And with that note, I'll see you next time.